What's up guys, JR Raymond back again coming to you from Bowler X Pro Shop and Training Center here inside Waterford Lanes, where today we're gonna talk again, once again, about that damn good Verge Pearl. But this time, we're actually gonna lay it out and I'm gonna show you how to lay it out using the dual angle system. So we'll talk about this bowling ball a little bit more uh, and lay it out for you here in a minute. Stay tuned. They say bowling is a dying sport. A dying sport. <laughs> I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. I disagree. BowlerX.com for the love of bowling. All right, welcome back. So we have the damn good Verge Pearl now. Uh, we talked about it a little bit yesterday, you saw, but now we're gonna lay this thing out with 246037. Uh, we are going to use the typical 45 by four and a half by 45 layout on this. So uh, let me get you moved into place. I got a yellow wax pencil. So that way you can see the lines a little bit easier and we'll go ahead and get this going. All right, so with this ball, we are going to do that 45 by four and a half by 45 layout. So um, being symmetrical, the only things that matter are the pin and the CG, of course, but we still have to create that line through uh, as if that mass bias is there. So we start with the pencil directly on the pin, straight through the CG, and then draw it all the way down to the end of the pro sec. So now we have our straight line from the pin straight through. Okay. Now, in order to get the first number, the first number, again, is a representation of how early that ball is going to or the core is going to take over. On a core like this, because it's symmetrical, this number doesn't matter other than aesthetics, like what it looks like. For me, I always like to have that 45 degree angle. It just you know, looks better for me. So um, we're going to go ahead and do that. But if we were to go by the number system for an asymmetrical ball, the closer to 20 degrees you get, the earlier that ball, that core is gonna to try to pick up. The closer to 80 or 85 degrees you get, the uh, the later that core is gonna to try to pick up and get going. So most times I go right in between. I don't want it to be early and I don't want it to be late. So we go 45 degrees. So we made a mark at 45 degrees. Now we line up our pencil directly from the pen through that mark you just made. And that's your 45 degrees. So from here to here is 45 degrees degrees okay so now we need the pin distance the pin distance i want is going to be four and a half inches um, so we go from pin to that angle so you set the prosec directly up on the, the zero with the pin and you mark over at four and a half inches this is going to be now where your positive axis is going to be so this technically will be ended up where your positive axis is so four and a half inches here the closer to three and three h you get the more flare you're going to get as you move away you're going to get a little bit less flare as you get closer to uh zero you're going to get less flare as well the max number is three and three eighths and that goes for everybody so from here this is the important number for ball reaction we want to know how much this ball is going to see the dry if we want it to blend off of the dry and be more rolly and not as sharp we would go with a bigger number which would bring the pin down if we want the ball to be sharp off of the dry and to uh, roll start rolling off of it as soon as it hits friction then we're going to go with a shorter number or a taller pin so the closer to 20 you go the taller the pin's going to be the higher you're going to put the pin and the more responsive off of the friction it's going to be the uh, closer to 90 you go the lower you're going to put the pin and the less responsive to friction it's going to be and the more smooth and arky a lot of people like to think that and the pin down layout is actually earlier and stronger. That's just not the case. That's not true. Most times your pin up ball is going to be stronger and give you that illusion that it's actually earlier because it's picking up the friction a lot harder. So if you have early friction in your center, uh, the bad move is to go pin up because it's going to see that early friction faster and it's going to stand up off of it. So uh, for my center, for example, this is an early friction place. A lot of pin down or solid bowling balls like to roll in this place better than a Pearl does. But for demo purposes in the center, we always do the same layout on all the deviate, um, deviate bowling balls, all the brands of Brunswick bowling balls. So we have our 45 inches. Now we need that third angle, which is going to be 45 degrees. Again, that's right in the middle. It's not going to be too responsive. It's not going to be, you know, under responsive. It's going to be right in the middle. So we mark at 45. We line up the zero, the pin right on the, the PAP, and then we draw a straight line through that mark we just made. 
All right, so for some reason my camera cut off, so we're gonna backtrack a little bit. And we're gonna talk about that third angle again. So that third angle uh, is determining how sharp off of the friction the ball is going to react. So the lower that third angle, the higher the pin's gonna be, and that means it's going to be super responsive to the friction. So if you have a place where you have a lot of early friction in your center, that's not necessarily what you want. A lot of people get confused and think that pin up means distance and, and flip, and pin down means early and roll, and that's not exactly the case. In a lot of situations, I actually can make pin down um, look like it hooks more down lane than pin up if it's in an early friction zone. Because pin down, meaning a bigger third number, bigger val number, means it's going to be a lower pin and it's gonna be less responsive to friction. So when I'm in a uh, early friction place, that pin down ball is going to read that early friction less and get further down lane and then restore some energy for down lane. Whereas a pin up ball in a high friction zone is going to read that friction, that early friction really fast and it looked like it goes straight the rest of the way for the most part. So you gotta be careful with these types of things. So for me, I did uh, 45 degrees. So I made that mark from here. You make the mark center zero on your PAP with the center of it going back through the pen. Mark it at 45, draw a straight line through again, and then you just do your PAP. For me, I am seven eighths up, so I have to make a mark seven eighths down from here, and then I'm four and three quarter over. So you make a mark four and three quarter over, and that gives you the crisscross, the cross there, which is your center of your grip, and uh, my fingers end up here. Pin above my fingers with my thumb. So this will give me uh, a middle of the road type of ball reaction that I can manipulate with my hand and make it do a little bit different things uh, as much as possible. That's why I use this layout more than anything is because of how much I can manipulate it. All right, so there you go. So that's the layout on the DV8 Damn Good Verge Pearl. Um, and again, the reason I use this layout for all of the demos is because it is the easiest to manipulate. I can make a 45 by four and a half by 45 do pretty much whatever I want. It's not gonna be super responsive off the friction. It's not gonna be super slow off the friction. It's not gonna be early rolling and it's not gonna be late rolling. It's gonna give me all that middle ground type stuff where then my hand position can manipulate what the ball does a little bit more. Because as I get my hand around it, that actually brings my, uh, my axis a little further away, which makes, or a little bit closer, which then makes the uh, pin a little bit closer and uh, makes it a little bit more responsive as well. A little bit more flare, makes it overall stronger. And when I get my hand more up the back of the ball and roll it, that brings my track closer to my thumb, which makes my PAP a little bit further out, which then makes the pin a little bit longer and makes it flare a little bit less and a little bit smoother and those types of things. So you can manipulate your hand to make a bowling ball do different things. So really, with whatever, whatever hand positions you have, um, if you are good enough, you should be able to move your positive axis by about an inch or so um, as much as you know you want to change your ball reaction. So don't think that whatever your PAP is that you know that it's the same no matter how you're throwing it. You may want to check what your PAP is when you when you get your hand position. Say you have three different hand positions. When you're getting your hand around it, what's your PAP there? Maybe it's you know five. Maybe it's four and a half by uh, inch and an eighth up. Whereas when you're just with your A game release, you're you know four and three quarter over by seven eighths up. And then when you're really trying to roll it and keep your hand behind it, say you're, you're five inches over and a half inch up or something like that. Maybe, maybe it all changes. So pay attention to that stuff because that changes your layout just a little bit. The, to the normal bowler, it's not gonna matter. That's not gonna make a big difference. You're not gonna see much of a difference on the lane. Um, but to you more ex advanced bowlers, the people who really can pay attention to ball reaction and see those minor differences out on the lanes, this will make a difference for you. So my argument has always been for the everyday recreational bowler, layouts don't matter near as much as matching up core and cover does. Um, but for the advanced players who are bowling in tournaments on tougher conditions and pay more attention to these overall you know, motions, uh, you're gonna see a difference in some of those small changes. So pay attention to all this, but that's all I got for you. Make sure you subscribe, comment, and uh, like below. Make sure to share this video around so people can learn the dual angle system a little bit and figure out what they wanna do with bowling balls as well. And if your pro shop isn't doing these things for you, you probably wanna find a new pro shop. So 
Make sure to get your PAP checked at least yearly, at least once at the beginning of the year before you start laying new equipment out. So that way you know you have the proper layouts on your bowling balls. So that's all I got for you. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. Take care.